I think it's an exciting time in Parkinson's disease as, uh, as if, because for the first time we are seeing a number uh, of new biological approaches uh, to the disease that might eventually uh, lead uh, really to provide a true disease modification, uh, something which uh, we have been envisioning uh, now for many years, uh, but we were never able to accomplish uh, in Parkinson at least. Uh, first of all, uh, the, our understanding of the disease process uh, has made us aware that uh, a specific protein in Parkinson is very important in disease progression. Uh, this uh, nuclein protein gets degraded, it uh, builds up fibrils, aggregates uh, that become uh, over time uh, toxic and might actually trigger uh, inflammatory responses. So uh, the first set of strategies that, that has been tested deals specifically with the development uh, of uh, monoclonal antibodies, uh, uh, humanized monoclonal antibodies uh, that are binding to specific uh, some amino acids of those fragments of the synuclein protein. And uh, uh, the idea is that if you inject a monoclonal antibody, a part of this antibody will cross the blood-brain barrier, enter the uh, extrasynaptic space where these fragments are floating, stick to them and take them out uh, uh, of the brain, clearing uh, uh, the brain from these fragments, uh, minimizing then the inflammatory responses uh, that are consequence of this, uh, and potentially uh, then preventing uh, disease progression. Uh, another approach uh, which has become uh, uh, quite interesting is uh, the use uh, of small molecules. Uh, uh, the monoclonal antibodies, they need to be injected uh, uh, intravenously uh, on a monthly basis to keep the tidal in the blood relatively high. But uh, the small molecules uh, are molecules uh, uh, that are specifically designed to be highly lipophilic so that they can cross the blood-brain barrier. They are very small uh, and they include uh, uh, part of substances uh, that bind specifically with uh, uh, portions of the protein that gets aggregated. They've been used uh, in a number of conditions uh, now these days. And in Parkinson, uh, there now there is one that has come to testing in clinical trials. Uh, and this uh, is a, a strategy which I think I mean, if, uh, may be potentially very valuable because uh, you just have to take a pill a couple of times a day and if uh, this proves to be efficacious, uh, as it has been shown uh, in animal models, uh, it may represent uh, really a breakthrough because uh, you don't have to stay in the hospital for two hours getting your antibody injected. You can take your tablet and the disease uh, will be slowed down. Then uh, we have another set of uh, uh, biological therapies uh, that are more, uh, that are targeting a subset of the Parkinson patients that are those who have uh, specific genetic mutations. Uh, now, through the use uh, of uh, genetic screening, uh, we came to understand that about 20% of our Parkinson population is carrying genetic mutations. The two most common ones are mutations of the glucocerebrosidase gene and of, the, uh, of a kinase LR2 uh, mutation. These two genes uh, are responsible for about 10, 15, in some regions about even 30, 40% of all Parkinson. Now, there, is, there are drugs specifically designed to uh, act with the glucocerebrosidase gene, to which we know uh, a mutation of this gene and of this protein will result in increased synuclein production and accumulation, increasing the likelihood to develop Parkinson or inhibiting uh, the kinase enzyme, which we know it is responsible uh, of the Parkinsonism in LARC2 uh, carriers. Both strategies uh, are uh, possibly very interesting. It could potentially be applied in also non-genetic cases because we know the systems are involved also in people who are not carrying this mutation.